for it one cannot port it directly so wh what one has to do is one has to convert this physical system which has infinite number of parameters to a finite number of parameters that is first reduction that is which will give equivalent discrete with a discrete parameters and from the discrete parameters which is which still has infinite degrees of freedom and which can still exist uh, which can still have an exact solution what we'll try to do is we will try to introduce discreteness into the system by assuming finite degrees of freedom so there are two reductions one is from the infinite number of parameters to the finite number of parameters and the second one is from the finite de infinite degrees of freedom to the finite degrees of freedom that will bring our physical system into our mathematical and discrete model that is required for us to progress in the finite element sense so this is the thing that is there so for starting with the physical system we will end up with the mathematical discrete system so there are certain uh, simplification one has to make while reducing the parameters the parameters can be for example it can be three dimensional in nature we would make it into one dimensional or two dimensional in nature or there can be uh, something like um, anisotropic material what we'll do is we'll make it into isotropic material for an isotropic material the number of material parameters one should require would vary depending upon um, the major symmetry to 21 while the isotropic material has only two parameters to represent the material system so that is one of the physical to equivalent system one kind of modeling and the next kind of modeling is still we assume bar as a continuous system which has infinite degrees of freedom what we do is we make it bar as a link system where only the ends of the bar is important for us that means the end of the bars are only the degrees of freedom of the, end of the bars are important for us and hence from this reduction to this reduction will become the discrete model so when we are making these kind of things sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work whenever it doesn't work we have to loop it back to check the accuracy of the system because there is something x is there which is a physical model we will be modeling something called as y by assuming certain simplifications and approximations we have to make sure these assumptions and simplifications will not make our solution much different from reality to make sure we have to have some accuracy checks so with this uh, i would try to proceed into the next slide which would be some more examples of your physical systems if you take a cantilever beam you take a plate and if you want to model the the plate you will see that it is the fourth order differential where w is the transverse displacement q is the uniformly distributed q is the distributed load and d is the biaxial bending stiffness this is the biaxial bending. so these are other kind of things these things you might have already seen it but you have to realize that this is your actual physical system and this is your mathematical system this to this is an approximation or a simplifications involved in it okay so next further the numerical methods for modeling any physical system can be broadly dis uh, discretized into several things the first one would be i would say finite difference method finite difference method is just commonly used in the fluid dynamics fluid dynamics and then is the finite volume method finite volume methods are also more common in the finite element uh, in the computational fluid dynamics then there comes is the finite element method in the left extreme end finite element methods is what we are going to learn in the current things and there are certain things called boundary element methods in the finite element methods your boundary conditions are given and you are trying to solve inside similarly in the boundary element boundary element method which is quite different from from the finite element where you try to populate your solution starting from the boundary okay anyway this is not current scope of our course so this is just an idea to show that finite element belongs to this class of things and further there are certain methods called meshless methods 
in which generally in this finite element or boundary element or FEM and FDM, we will have at least cells or elements or nodes and certain like things. We will have cells or elements into the picture. However, in meshless methods, we don't have anything called as cells. So there are these things are also useful for dealing certain complicated problems. Again, this would be out of the current scope. So then further, this finite element method and boundary element methods are can also be combinedly used to solve you know, to come up with some hybrid finite element methods. These are advanced topics which will help you in solving some complicated problems, dealing with um, singularities, jumps and other things. Uh, but finite element method is mostly used when the system is continuous system without having any discontinuities. So finite element is mostly popular. This part of the things, the left part, the left part of the things are mostly prevalent in the solid mechanics area while the right part is mostly used by the fluid dynamics people. However, if someone wants to do fluid structure interaction, one has to club all these methods to solve a real world problem. Generally, these problems occurs in the aerospace where you have both structure interacting with the fluid and vice versa. So anyway, the scope of this uh, current course is related to only finite element methods. However, I want to re-emphasize that, that any physical system can be modeled using one of these numerical methods. All these are numerical methods. These are not analytical methods. And one can use one of the suitable methods, sometimes more than one, to solve a given problem. Okay. At this point of time, I will try to take a few questions. It is, this is its mathematical model. This is a two-dimensional plate problem and this is its uh, mathematical description. And uh, similarly, um, any physical system can be a fluid problem or a structure problem or fluid structure interaction problem can be modeled through one of these uh, uh, numerical methods. The first one being the finite element method. The second one is being boundary element method. Third one is meshless, finite volume method, and finite difference methods. This finite volume method and finite uh, difference methods are mostly prevalent in the fluid dynamics areas, while finite element, boundary element, and meshless methods are more mostly prevalent in the solid mechanics areas. Okay, I'll go to the next slide since I don't have any questions. So further, how did these numerical methods evolve? These numerical methods evolved something from the traditional finite element methods or traditional numerical methods called weighted residual equations or weighted residual methods. So in the first chapter, I will again try to cover weighted residual methods in detail at a later point of time. But at this given point, I will just give you a bird's view. So you take weighted residual method, which is nothing but an approximation like yesterday in the previous class I have given that instead of uh, grading each and every individual for passing the course for 50, instead I put it a group of four to evaluate the people that is one form of weighted residual form sense. So in the weighted residual sense, you make some local approximations through certain functions, then at this point of time, you are ready to adopt one of the previous methods that I have been mentioning. Those things are like, if it is domain methods and difference methods, it falls under one category. And if it is domain methods or boundary methods, it falls under the thing. And boundary methods classifies into the other things. In the finite differences methods, you take your residual with the approximation in the strong form. Strong form is also known as your partial differential or ordinary differential form. And you put your local approximation over this residual on the strong form, then it will give rise to finite difference method. Whereas 
instead of taking a strong form you take the weak form are also known as integral form of equilibrium equation and then you put your local approximation and then you try to minimize your residue that will lead to your finite element methods however if you use a transform form and use it on the boundary methods that will lead to your boundary element methods in defining all these three there is something called as in this way they are connected through weighted residue what you need to do is you need to select the weight and that is weighing functions are also known as um, in finite element they are also known as shape functions or Lagrangian functions and other kind of stuff and then you try to minimize it now when you are trying to minimize it there can be many forms how to minimize it one is through Galerkin form or through collocation point collocation form or least square minimization movements and other methods don't worry about these the details of this in the next class I'll be explaining in detail what are these four types of methods and we will solve one certain weighted residual equation to solve a uh, finite element things however I want to re-emphasize that um, the traditional finite element forms it is not really finite difference method they also form strong form in the weighted residual so the weighted residual is like a foundation or a traditional finite element where the evolution of all the other numerical methods has started that's the reason when people cover a finite element course they start with the weighted residual and weighted residual is the place where it will help you in an easier fashion the same picture what you do it in the modern finite element so if you have any questions I will try to stop here and take few questions manner you take your continuous model and you try to mimic it with a mathematical model as exact as it possible sometimes you need to make reductions if you do without any reduction if you try to do it it will be 3d model and well as while explaining all these things I'm assuming that I'm only in the linear domain uh, non-linearities are not considered so that's the reason here it has been mentioned elastic theory so don't worry about uh, plasticity and other things I'm assuming that I'm in the elastic or the linear domain so if you want to model 3d that is one way to do it otherwise you can go for the asymptotic models the asymptotic models can be reduction from the three dimension to either one dimension of state or a two dimension of state for example if you take a slab or um, a roof you know that the length and width is much higher than the thickness of the slab in that cases you can model a 3d as an equivalent to a 2d model by assuming appropriate plane stress or plane strain or a shell theory how at the same time if you look at a beam or a column they have x and y direction the cross section dimensions are very small compared to the longitudinal or the x direction that's the reason that we can model it as one dimensional model such as bars and beams so from the continuous exact model we can reduce it to asymptotic models to 1d or 2d and further we can discretize it through proper discretized models which we descri described in the previous stuff and then we can appropriately model through finite differences elements or boundary element method so this is how a discrete modeling can be achieved now what is a finite element let me go through it in detail now in finite element there can be two things sometimes you may be modeling a physical system sometimes you may be modeling a mathematical model so a finite element is nothing but a numerical analysis technique for obtaining an approximate solution to wide variety of engineering problems an engineering problem can mimic a physical system an engineering problem can be a mathematical model so as I said even 
seen in the previous class finite element is a magic wand that is true but it may not give you an exact solution it will only give you an approximate solution but the purpose of um, analyzer is to make sure that it matches with the physical or a mathematical model as closely as possible so if you look at into a physical system on a physical system you apply a finite element method and try to discretize it to create a discrete model and on the discrete model by applying appropriate loading and boundary conditions and uh, through finite element formulations you try to seek for the solution and the solution that is obtained is a discrete solution because you are starting your question is a discrete model your solution will be also a discrete solution and then you have to make sure that the errors are limited between your discrete model and the discrete solution and you need to understand that your discrete model may be not really mimicking your ideal mathematical model okay so but one has to as i shown in the previous thing one has to um, do a reality check once in a while so that they match as closely as possible further from the discrete solution when we map down to a physical system you can see that there are several different things that is one is modeling error which is from here to here this is a modeling error and then from here to here there is a solution error so that means this is your solution obtained and this is what you started with so your total simulation error consists of a modeling error and a simulation error so again as i said earlier we have to make sure that the total error has to be minimized sometimes this modeling may be too high sometimes this may be too high not necessarily every time your error comes from this to this it may be because of this is also so your total error consists of a modeling error as well as solution error similarly if you look at a mathematical model on the mathematical model create a discrete things with certain imp inputs from the ideal physical system and then you seek for your solution now when you are doing these things uh, you obtain the solution again as i as we seen here there can be a solution error and further when you are going from the discrete solution to the mathematical model which is a continuous thing you can end up with a discretization errors so your total solution consists of discretization error plus solution error so one has to again make a reality check so that this error can be discrete can be minimized as much as possible so this will lead to your discretization from continuous model since you are generating a discrete model this will lead you to uh, this will bring in a discretization error this will bring you the solution error so one has to check which one is significant and try to do verification checks to minimize such kind of things this is what is finite element either you can operate on a physical system or operate on a mathematical model and these are the two things which generally you see in the engineering problem and this is how you model it now what are finite element, element methods so let me just wait here and take any questions before i move further just now a finite element method let's this is one of the tooth of a gear or uh, yeah you can consider it as this is a tooth of a gear now this is one unit and what you have done is you have divided this structure using an element this is a typical element which is shaded gray and you can see round dots which are nothing but nodes on this elements so that means your entire domain is discretized into few elements and the element constitutes of nodes now what you do is on this you apply piecewise functions at each and every element level and then obtain your equilibrium equation in discrete sense once you get your discrete sense now you have to reconnect it all these elements to obtain i that means let me tell you again i have equilibrium condition in the discrete form k 
ku is equals to f in this element in this element this element this element but i am not interested in each and every element i am interested in the entire tooth as a whole so what i need to do is i need to connect all the things so that the continuity is maintained and the global equilibration equilibrium is sought in that manner what we do is we will transform our governing differential equation into set of algebraic equation for the entire structure now in a let me re-emphasize it in a continuum uh, sense every point in this anywhere you put a dot is a degree of freedom that's the reason in a analytical framework or in a partial differential equation sense any given point on this tooth is a degree of freedom however in a finite element sense your degree of freedom is only at the places where you see a circle or you also called it as node so wherever there is a node you have degrees of freedom on that given node that's the reason the number of degrees of freedom for a finite element is finite while the degrees of freedom for an in, uh, for an uh, analytic uh, for a strong form are infinite in nature so this is the quite important stuff one has to understand because this is the the key concept of finite element now at this point of time i just want to ask one question which structure is stiffer is it fe model or continuous model so i will try to continue it what you do is you tie this thread to slightly to a math sticks that's the thread made up of four math sticks i mean it's tied to four math sticks how many degrees of freedom this math stick will have uh, the thread which is tied to the math stick because this math stick is like a rigid bar the only ends of it can displace so it has lesser degrees of freedom that means a finite element method has a lesser degree of freedom it is just like tying a sticks to the thread and only mo moving the degrees of freedom at the end of the math stick while the continuous system which is just but a thread has a degree of freedom at each and every point on the thread it's a continuous model so which which one has more flexibility generally the flexibility of infinite system is more compared to the uh, compared to the discretized model so your flexibility is opposite to the stiffness so that's the reason fe model is more stiffer that is it is more rigid so if the stiffness is more the displacement should be that is flexibility is less so your displacement is less that means when you have your fe model solution and your continuous model solution let's say you also know continuous model solution the easiest proof check is to see your fe model should give you a lesser displacement compared to the continuous model because fe model is more stiffer compared to your continuous model why one has to use a finite element method there are several reasons the first thing is generally for all configurations the closed form solutions are not available even if it is a closed form solution is available it may be very complicated or very complex in nature to obtain them that is the prime reason why one has to seek for a finite element method but not an analytical method and the next thing is this is a general uh, the, the procedure what you learn in a finite element methods course is very generic in nature and it is not problem specific the next one is most of the time you can seek the solution in an iterative manner compared to uh, one shot method so this is very convenient when you are solving these things in a 
cyclic manner in your computers and it will also bring down the cost the next one is if you have your system um, finite element system this can be closely integrated to your CAD CAM applications that's the reason uh, this is also again heavily used in the the things and the next and the final most important one is um, generally to conduct an experiment is very costly experiment means um, the, you take the actual bar or a beam load it and then test the structure by putting actual uh, uh, this uh, loading and then do it is a very costliest affair however you can model simulate the same thing in your abacus or analysis or some your user written code and you can get your same solution or a, an approximation to that in a uh, very cost effective manner so imagine now if you want to study the entire uh, process window or something like that you need to conduct several experiment you need to design lot of experiments and these experiments if you are doing in real then imagine one experiment if it cost one lakh hundred experiment would cost cost you a crore right but you don't with the finite element it would not cost you that much you do it once you can do a parametric study through design of experiments and you can run for several cases so, and it is not as costly as your actual experiment in nature so that's the reason to to capture your process windows mostly you need to do your design of experiments and to carry out this design of experiments through simulations is the most cost effective manner that is one reason and finally sometimes you want to let's say if it's a uh, space on a aer um, aeronautical application where you need lightweight structure that means you need an optimized structure for high strength to stiffness ratio oh, sorry strength to weight ratio so in order to find the optimization again you need to search in the your uh, uh, you, you need to try to search in your parametric zone so that you can find the optimal position or optimal solution so that's the reason even finite element since you can do lot of experiment at lesser uh, you can simulate lot of things at a easier uh, or cost effective manner finite element is mostly used in these kind of things so this is the reason why one generally adopts finite element methods compared to actual experiments or for uh, or to seek an actual analytical solution because analytical solutions are to summarize the analytical solutions are not always there even if it is there very complicated the second thing is if in order to conduct a real experiments it, it may be very costly and it may not be really feasible that's however once you've set up your finite element it is so generic that you can do design of experiments or also you can obtain your optimized structure wherever possible so that's the reason finite element is used heavily and what are the applications of uh, finite element methods the finite element applications you can see in several domains like mechanical aerospace civil automobile and in these things you see several things like structural analysis like static analysis transient analysis it can be linear it can be non-linear like forging forming and other kind of things or it can be thermal or fluid flow it can also be in the electromagnetism sometimes it, it is also used in geomechanics to find the fault structures or to see the wave propagation during the earthquakes and other kind of stuff and in biomechanics also used it's like if somebody uh, want to get their hip or a knee replacement then what kind of things one has to do can also be simulated through finite element in material science something like you want to design high strength alloy so that can also be obtained through material science texture evolution and other kind of things and uh, futuristic metals and alloys can be designed or composites can be de designed using these finite element techniques so as a nutshell nature 
it can be used in several areas or domains i'll give you some few examples one such example is this crash testing so crash testing is one of the important uh, metric if you want to if somebody has to sell their car uh, a car maker has to sell their car especially in us or european nation however in india people don't take this car um, crash test as important thing very few cars have passed in india maybe one or two but this is one of the important things so this um picture shows you the simulation from the mercy software which uses finite element as its background for different types of impact so the first one shows a full frontal impact with a rigid barrier so this one is a rigid barrier and you have this in a suv which is kind of going for a frontal impact and it will show that how much things get um kind of damaged or deformed how much energy is kind of absorbed and it so how much amount of energy is kind of uh, reflected back because during a crash test what happens is if the energy gets reflected it will hit the human who uh, the driver or the the, the navigator or the, the passengers and it will cause severe damage one has to know that the damage to the uh humans are most important rather than the structure so that's the reason when cars are designed they are designed so that they can absorb lot of impact energy so and some ways of reducing this thing is uh by keeping the airbags and in order to design or in order to place the airbags one also need several inputs from these kind of crash simulators or crash simulation test these are several other kind of things for an suv for the uh, frontal impact and full full frontal impact from the bottom view top view and uh, the the side view is this one and uh, this one gives you the cross sectional things this is one kind of a study there are several norms based on which one has to perform these things but you need to understand that in order to perform such a kind of a crash test to model this such a complicated system like an suv or an automobile like this one need to have a close to billion degrees of freedom so billion degrees of freedom is really many i need to see that this tire is a hyper elastic material and um, this may be the composite material the bumpers mufflers and other things and the glasses are there and some are metals some are composites some are uh, polymers so each and some are rigid materials in nature so each one is different in nature so there are different kind of materials are there that means and the, the geometry is also very complicated in nature several different materials are there several different material properties are there some are in elastic domain some are in plastic domain some are in um, some inertial effects are there some are some um all kinds of different uh, physics are present in such a complicated system and you can see that if such a complicated system can be represented by the use of finite element so at this point of time i will stop once and try to see if some people have any questions sometimes i have seen some kind of software people coming to me and uh, saying that i have put uh, billion degrees of freedom million degrees of freedom and i guarantee that i'll get a exact solution but i don't reply them back because i mostly we know that it gives you an approximate solution but not necessarily by increasing to infinite degrees of freedom it will never give you finite solution because there can be a discretization error there can be solution error there can be many things so only in the case if you reduce your discretization error solution error truncation errors modeling errors you may be putting million degrees of freedom but an elastic material uh, elastoplastic material is modeled as only elastic material it may not give you the exact solution so 
as a as a engineer you should able to judge that what you got as your solution does it make sense within the given assumptions or not is the first thing and are these assumptions really make sense can you reduce this constraint so that can you bring it to the reality yes or no you one has to closely check and by the end of this course you should able to understand what you got is a real solution or is some numerical artifact that is most important okay because most of the time as an engineer you will be reading the results of some others analysis entitlement analysis and this is one of the crash test where there is no human dummy present in it sometimes you need to also understand uh, some crash simulations are there where they also keep human mannequin sometimes they model it as a rigid material sometimes they model it with actual degrees of freedom so we also do full musculoskeletal modeling and also tissue modeling which all can be solved through fine entitlement if you assume a passenger sitting inside and he is also modeled as a structure as a deformable structure and due to this impact we can also model what amount of impact and what kind of injuries he can take or it will it will give it to him and to avoid such kind of things how you need to design your airbags how you need to place your airbags so that the impact or the injuries or the damage coming from such a kind of impact can be minimized in the automobile industry let's say one one wants to do a manned mission to a mars or and you see when you are sending some uh, astronomers or to uh, to, uh, to the space and you are you you have to retrieve them also because it is very costly to send a, a manned missions are always always very costly in nature you have sent somebody to learn something and you have to retrieve them safely that is your main goal if there are no human in it maybe it can also crash land because the data would have been retrieved through wi through some kind of uh, i mean communication protocols however the amount of knowledge one a human gains is much more important and you have to retrieve them this person as safe as possible so even when you are kind of uh, reentry and through crash landing into the ocean or something like that you need to design the inside of the cabins in such a manner that it can take 3g or 6g or 12g kind of an impact and all this kind of uh, different maneuvers that they can go through it these things are also important while somebody is designing the ergonomics for a fighter aircraft and something like that so finite element is these kind of things are can be applied in several different areas i think some of you might already been using your uh, using finite element to solve different kind of problems so this is one of the application the other application is like electronic electronic packaging so excuse me electronic packaging is nothing but nowadays everybody has a cell phone or a laptop or some kind of a desktop all these things inside there are millions of chips transistors all these things have been packaged to give certain usable device so all these these things comes under electronic packaging so this one thing gives you a pcb board with a silicon chip on it connected through this solder mask and this in this case people are showing Uh, how this solder bumps are there through uh, high resolution imaging and these things are modeled here excuse me for fracture using finite element sense so this will give you the reliability of this packaging slip so let's say you are kind of uh, taking your laptop on and you are running to catch your bus can it take that kind of things because there is a mechanical loading there is electrical loading everything that is going into the picture so how long it can sustain what would be the reliability imagine once you uh, take this laptop running to your, uh, and catch a bus and it start working you don't like such kind of things so one has to understand this kind of interaction mechanical and electrical and other kind of loading and how they can be sustained those things and how long will be its life so mostly when you are designing 
people unless it's a static thing you study for only static loading otherwise mostly people study for life once you study for the life the reliability and other things will come into the picture so this is one kind of things where people have studied your solder solder bumps using a finite element sense to see how the cracks form once the cra once the crack is formed the interconnect is broken once the interconnect is broken this is a broken circuit and it will stop working so that's the reason these kind of problems can also be studied in the finite element and these are not limited there are many more i'll show one more thing for example a turbine blade earlier in order to find the uh, generally the turbine blades um, are kind of fixed through interference fit when you do such kind of interference fit you will see lot of residual stresses getting developed and these residual stresses are generally obtained through photoelastic or isochromatic and other kind of um, in 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 uh, photoelastic and other thing other things experimentally however you can also obtain the stress strain distribution in these these things using finite element sense so uh, these experiments are really costly to uh, to carry out however uh, one can also conduct using the the same blades a finite element analysis and then also obtain your stress strain curves so this is how they used to do it uh, 30 40 years ago now people mostly use finite elements to get their stress strain distributions now at this point of time we have seen a lot of applications of finite element and at this point of time i want to say that in finite element not everything is good there are certain bad also there there are also some cons in the finite element they are not only pros but there are also cons into it so those are you need to also understand because uh, good is only one side of the coin bad also you should know before using it judiciously so the bad part of the finite element is it is an approximation it is only in very few cases it will give you exact solution otherwise it's a closer approximation and that closeness you can control it by adjusting your approximations uh, assumptions and simplifications you made and sometimes sometimes it can only take ideal boundary condition the real boundary conditions may not be simulated at certain times and as a finite element user you should know physics knowing what is the given governing differential equation what is the physics of the problem so finite element will not tell you the physics of the problem it will only give you solution it is you that you need to know the physics of the problem and why it is so because finite element softwares are used as a black box they are never used the, any commercial software will not tell you what is there inside how they have coded it what are the numerical things they they have made because it is their intellectual property and that's the reason finite element box uh, finite elements are like a black box where you give certain you click certain buttons create a geometry and you get your solution but as a user you should know the, the uh, what is there inside and the purpose of this course is make you aware that what options you need to make and what is there inside how those people might have coded or solved the problem that is one thing even after so many things one one has to understand that no solution no numerical solution is accepted as it is at least for certain cases you need to validate them so that's the reason at least for one or few benchmark solutions one has to validate the finite element solution with the experimental results otherwise one cannot believe the finite element solutions as it is okay so you benchmark it or you kind of verify it for certain uh, problems then the validity can be extended or interpolated for the others and sometimes it is very difficult to capture the exact physics of the problems because you have introduced discretization error truncation error solution error and several different things and there are several other inherent numerical problems that are present in the finite element method which we will discuss as and when we go through it at this point of time i will stop again and i will take few more questions
and we have seen that it is used to solve several different kinds of problems uh, one from aerospace one from uh, automobile several different arenas like material science packaging industry and other things uh, and then we also looked at the limitations of finite element now we want to go further we want to really learn what is for finite element so let's start uh, let me help you through fem through structure in structural analysis so uh, i will list it out in this slide and uh, you describe the variation of the field variables over the each thing by assuming a piecewise polynomial because any function can be approximated by polynomials the same thing you are using on your field variables using this approximation and the discretized structure you put it in your equilibrium condition and you formulate your discrete equilibrium in the each element then you have got equilibrium in each and every small piece but you want equilibrium of the entire structure in order to get the equilibrium of the entire structure you need to connect all these elements to get your approximate system for the whole structure so do you will do the assembly i will go through it each and everything individually in the subsequent slides but i just want to give you a overview first and then once you have the assembly or the uh, equilibrium of the entire structure the whole structure you apply the appropriate boundary condition that has been listed out and then you solve for the unknown degrees of freedom or unknown quantities at the nodes and once you know the uh, solve for unknown degrees of freedom then using this un after solving the for the unknowns you also determine the unknowns once you know this unknowns you estimate the desired field quantities like stress strains reactions and other things into the picture so this completes your finite element in the structural analysis now let's go into the concept of finite element in a closer view and then try to understand in much more details now consider any problem like an elastic problem or a thermal problem fluid problem any given thing like an electrostatics or biomechanics any physical problem or an engineering problem can be described by this a mathematical model where l is a linear operator it can be a differential equation or a partial differential equation l phi plus l of phi plus b is equals to 0 where phi is your solution or the field variable now this is your governing differential equation however this governing differential equations are also has to be solved with something called as your boundary condition because in in a real engineering problem what you en encounter is a boundary value problem a boundary value can volume uh, boundary value problem consists of a governing differential equation along with your boundary condition within a given domain that that is what constitutes of a boundary value problem so that means it boundary value problems occurs in any given physical phenomena like elasticity thermal fluid flow like these things so these physical systems consist of a governing differential equation along with a boundary condition and through this set of these two governing differential equation and boundary condition you need to solve for phi and get your solution phi that is what is your given things but we know that this is the strong form we cannot solve this system in the strong form so what we will do is we will try to introduce something called as an approximation at this thing what i'm showing is only traditional form of finite element where i'll try to use only strong form to get it but in the subsequent things i'll try to introduce the weak form so let's understand for complex model having complex boundary condition one cannot have exact solution so that's the reason we'll assume an approximate solution phi tilde so you you see the difference phi is a exact solution whereas phi over the phi there is a tilde that represents it is an approximate solution it is not exact that means when i take this phi and put it back in this governing differential equation it is not zero that is the key important part of it however if phi tilde is same as phi 
then only it is zero so at this point of time i want to give you one parallel analogy let's say let all of us buy a lottery ticket okay and uh, let's say we are 100 people and 100 tickets are sold who can how many people can win the lottery ticket only one can win the lottery ticket so he can only have celebration all other people will not have celebration because they have lost money so only one guy there is there are out of hundred only one guy is the exact solution in the similar fashion approximations are many and one approximation can match with the exact solution but do you know that not always like if you just if i go ahead and go go to a shop and just buy a lottery ticket it doesn't mean i'm the winner so not necessarily everyone is the winner so that means if you put an approximation it will always be if it is zero it is a winner if it is not zero it will leave a residue that means it is this is not a zero quantity if it is an approximate solution only one guy is zero all others may be things but we don't know who is the solution i'm searching for the solution so phi tilde plus uh, l of phi tilde plus b is not equals to zero however however b phi tilde plus g is equals to zero why this is true here also it is b phi plus g is equals to zero this is one of the key thing important for the finite element this is zero but this is not zero why it is so so at this point if somebody knows the solution uh, knows the answer i want to ask because this is one of the crucial point to understand and deal with it further so why can anybody tell why b phi why b phi plus g is equals to zero and b approximate p plus g is equals to zero average it over the integral form and minimize the error to get your set of linear algebraic equations and this set of linear algebraic equations can be inverted where k is your system characteristics u is your response function and f is your input that is coming from the external loading okay that is very similar to this kind of spring where k is your spring stiffness f is the external load applied which is the input to the given structure and u is the response of the system so the external force has to be balanced by the internal resistance which is nothing but k times u so ku is equals to f so what you are doing through finite element formulation is you are converting your algebraic uh, converting your governing differential equation through numerical approximation and through some kind of weighted residual method into set of linear algebraic equations once you convert into this linear algebraic system it is very easy to invert it and get your solutions so i'll continue further now see this as i said finite element is not only used for structural problems finite element is also used for thermal fluid electrostatics and other things now this the k in the different kind of problem represents different quanti uh, quantities the k in the structural problems are called stiffness and the response u is called displacement and the input f is nothing but your force however in thermal the k is your conductivity u is nothing but your temperature and input is your q which is nothing but heat source similarly in fluid problems this is viscosity k is viscosity your degrees of freedoms are velocity and your input is nothing but body forces similarly in your electrostatics your k is your 
dielectric permittivity and response is your electric potential and the input is your charge and this is your u are also known as unknowns for your problem so this is how a finite element would in all the finite element you will convert into ku is equals to f for structural k is called stiffness for thermal it is called conductivity for the other problems it would be different things in nature so now in order to do these things i need to also discuss about discretization so this is your given structure the structure is discre discretized into several smaller elements the elements would be like this and each element would be talking to each other with a common even though these lines are there they are common i just try to separate it out to make sure that they are visible to you but they are connected so it is first of all it is very difficult to write your equilibrium equation to or, a, or an approximation to such a complicated uh, geometry so what we do is we make it into a smaller chunk and then write your algebraic approximation to a smaller thing called element and then we try to connect to the global uh, things seek for the global equilibrium invert it and get your final degrees of freedom but however you need to see that between the two elements they are sharing the common nodes so if you take any two element this common face is there that is nothing but these two that means these two elements will be sharing these four nodes in common and they are same for this one and to the other one using this discretization will help you to con help you to deal with the assembly for example for each and every element you have your local equilibrium for this element is ku is equals to fe for this element it, you will have your different ku is equals to fe so you take these two no, not only these two all the things in this thing and assemble in the global sense by assembling it you will get your global stiffness matrix and how do you get this uh, assembly done with the help of element connectivity matrix at this point of time it is too early to explain what is element connectivity matrix but at later point i'll try to explain what is this element connectivity matrix so that one can perform assembly now this is one such example where uh, i'm one example where i'm showing how an actual bolted joint is modeled and you have um, a contact in between your thread so uh, between the bolt and the nut this thread has a contact and this contact can also be modeled through finite element methods so this is an enlarged portion of this bolt and nut contact region and you need several refined elements and a um, contact elements to transfer the uh, load from one surface to the other surface through certain contact formulations so this is one of the advanced problem these problems is also can be solved through finite element now i'm we are coming to the end of the uh, the things let me give you a brief about the history of finite element actually the finite element have been started long back in 1943 by corent by starting the variation principle so variational principles are the principle where first people have converted the strong form into the weak form that is the, the starting point where people have started figuring figuring out that the strong form is not good form to solve the set of equations then later in 1954 Arigras has started using matrix method. Maybe you guys might have studied energy and matrix method as part of your course curriculum. That is a precursor to the finite element. So in 1954, these methods has been started. Further, by Turner, Clough, Martin, and others, stiffness has been introduced, and it has uh, from that time onwards, this has started. Uh, the from the traditional finite element the galerkin forms has been uh, started developed during the 1960s and other part of time and the first commercial software was obtained in 1964 and it has been used in mainframe computers in 1970s imagine that time the your mainframe computer would be very big uh, would be occupying very big hall the amount of computing it would do is much smaller than the cell phone you have it in your hand the 
codes and convert the algorithms into the machine language and crack the numerical uh, computing and get the solution back. Now modern computers are much more sophisticated and easy to work with, user friendly to work with. So anyway, these are the things and the major development has started something from the 1970s onwards and there are several uh, increments of the advancement of the study has been of the subject has been done in the later years of time. So before we close, we, I need to explain that there are two different formulations mainly in the finite element formulation. One is displacement method and the stress method. If you look back when I'm saying KU is equals to F, I developed it assuming my unknown degree of freedom is U, which is nothing but displacement. Mostly displacement framework is used in finite element. So at this point of time, I will stop and try to take any questions if you have. Okay, no questions again. So that's fine. So anyway, we are coming close to the uh, presentation. So mostly for displacement finite elements are uh, useful. Uh, sometimes uh, people may also require uh, uh, stress based finite element or flexibility method. If it is displacement method, it is called stiffness approach. If it is stress based approach, it is called flexibility approach. And at times, one has to use both as uh, degrees of freedom. These are generally required when you are handling problems like uh, um, hyper elastic problem where you require UP formulation where U is displacement, P is your pressure, where it, which it can be classified into mixed, bond, uh, mixed formulations. We will come to it at a later point of time. So to almost close the topic, if you want to look any finite element, the finite element consists of into three major blocks. One is precursor, the other one is solver and the post processor. In most of the commercial software, they give you solver as a black box. You don't know how they are doing the assembly, how they are solving, uh, how they are solving, how they are framing their formulation and other things. All you have is an access to give your inputs like create a geometry, put the loading conditions and put the boundary conditions and other things that is the preprocessor and you submit it, the black box will solve you the things and then once you it solves for the degrees of freedom, you try to get as many results as possible from the, from the degree of freedom you get your derived quantities like stresses. Um, reaction forces, strain energy, dissipations and others and so forth or eigenvalues, eigenmodes and other things. So then you have post processor. So in any commercial or any finite element program it consists of three modules pre preprocessor, solver and post processor. And in this course the key emphasis of this course is what is there inside this solver of any given commercial software. And not only that, we'll also connect it through some preprocessor and postprocessor. But the main emphasis is to know what is going inside the solver. It is it should not be black box at the end of this course. You should know that what is there inside the solver for any commercial software. So uh, to list the commercial software that are available in the market at this given point of time, there are many more, hundreds and thousands of it, out of which I have listed very few. And the popular ones, those are ANSYS, Abacus, Nastran, ComSol, Pattern, Hypermesh and other things which are like mostly, most of them uh, are like uh, ComSol is also there, I think I, I for, forgot to mention. Mostly now, nowadays all of them are uh, multi-physics in nature. That means you can solve um, a structural problem, thermal problem, fluid flow problems, electromagnetism uh, and using the same framework you can even apply to equivalent systems. So the list is not limited, you can find yourself many, but uh, the most important ones would be like ANSYS, Abacus and ComSol would be um, Nastran and uh, MSC, uh, Nastran and Pattern would be the more, more uh, uh, popular ones. So with this introduction to finite element, um, what I want to say is the core objective of this thing is to understand the finite element fundamentals, to know the element formulation, 
building the finite element model for a given problem, knowing the solution techniques, linking the model to reflect the physics of the problem, and knowing the results both qualitatively and quantitatively, and expose it to the various application. So with this as a thing, there are certain list of references which I have used to prepare this presentation. And at this point of time, I am ready to take a lot of questions from you. And uh, please try to um, uh, uh, be very interactive because I like being interactive in that way I can also understand that uh, you, you are following my course. And if there is any scope for me to improve and connect you, to learn this course properly, it will also give me a lot of satisfaction. So please share your questions. And uh, if, you, if you want me to go through certain slides, I can go back and go through them again.